Well, I suppose if there is an individual who played a pivotal part in allowing us to get genome science to where it is now, the mapping of the Human Genome Project, the forensic applications of uh, DNA fingerprinting, these really wouldn't have happened at the time and in the way that they happened without the discoveries of Edwin Sutton. He's really best known for two inventions. The first one is the one that is named after him, the Southern Blot. The Southern Blot was a breakthrough because it allowed one to detect individual sequences in these vast areas of complex genomes, like the human genome. And one could pick out individual molecules or strings of molecules in the genome sequence and say that they were either present or not present in that individual sample. And of course, this has been used for many techniques, such as, for example, the DNA fingerprinting technique, which has been used in all sorts of forensic applications and other applications over the past 20 or 30 years. The second invention was the realization that by depositing specific DNA sequences on solid surfaces, such as glass, one could allow that to capture DNA sequences from complex genomes. In a way, it was like the reverse of the southern blot. That led to the production of a new biotechnology area, the area of microarrays. And these techniques, the southern blot and the microarray technique, have been used by hundreds or thousands of laboratories over the past 20 or 30 years, including our own. I have a team of about 15 people. The aims of our research are to use traditional genetic techniques and new genome technologies and information to allow us to understand better and to manage the treatment of human disease. The technologies that we have available, we have next generation sequencing machines. The most powerful of those can sequence a genome, a human genome, in just 24 hours. We have machines that can rapidly amplify parts of the genome using what we call integrated microfluidics tiny volumes of DNA that are shuffled around a little chip, like a computer chip, and combine them in various ways so that little tiny parts of the genome can be amplified and then sequenced. We can take 50 patient samples at a time, and just in the space of two days, we can diagnose whether they have a particular familial form of high cholesterol. And that's really important. This is a disease that is underdiagnosed worldwide. The sequence of the first human genome was completed just over 10 years ago and was estimated to cost $3 billion. Now we can sequence a whole human genome in under two weeks. In fact, if we need to, we can sequence a genome in just one or two days. And the cost of that has come down from $3 billion to around $5,000 or £3,000. That allows us to ask questions that we couldn't have conceived of answering five years ago and to apply it both to clinical practice and research in a way that is really influencing how medicine is practiced. And this I think was envisaged by the Genomic Medicine Inquiry by the House of Lords Science and Technology Committee published about four years ago which I was privileged to be the specialist advisor for and now is starting to expand into all areas of medical practice. One of the great advantages of working with the MRC is the infrastructure and the equipment that is available in MRC units. For example, we have in the MRC Clinical Sciences Centre two of the most powerful next generation sequencing machines, including the opportunity to analyse uh, the genome data computationally, an area that now would be called bioinformatics. And having these type of facilities available to us means that we can progress much more rapidly and probably do more sophisticated experiments than we otherwise would be able to do. I may be somewhat prejudiced here as a genome scientist, but I think most people would agree that genome technology and information offers a transformational step in medical practice so that in 10 or 20 years, genomic medicine will become a routine part of practice and just as we can't manage life now without mobile phones in 10 or 20 years time we won't be able to envisage how medicine was practiced before we could sequence whole genomes and as we understand the precise genetic and molecular basis 
of these diseases, we can find new treatments. So we'll combine that knowledge with other treatments such as gene therapy, so that if we know that an individual has one gene and one protein that doesn't work properly, we might be able to replace that in a very targeted way. And I think there may be scores or even hundreds of diseases like this that in 10 or 20 years time we can treat and cure with these approaches.